investor because in the very near term stock prices have corrected very sharply so you know that has created a lot of panic within retail investor but i think uh, you know if the company's balance sheet financials is pretty strong and i think the tailwind in the sector is also pretty positive then i think one should need to hold on and i think you know look at the companies from a long term perspective i would believe that once the covid scare goes away and hopefully you know some more clarifications come in the market will bounce back also equally sharply i think the uh, indian economy is in the best of health uh, we have got uh, you know a large kind of uh, corporate capex done by a lot of companies quarterly numbers for quarter 3 are also expected to be pretty decent so i think uh, i think this is a time where you got to be selective and you got to have a lot of conviction and patience on the stock if you want so i think think long term and don't think short term and i think uh, this pain will soon go away markets will definitely recover but i think it needs a lot of temperament and patience uh, you know to face these volatile markets uh shell i think uh, rbnl as well as other rail infra stocks are likely to do uh, definitely well over the longer term considering the fact that you know the railway budget is going to be presented with the normal budget and this time there are indications that the corporate uh, you know capex which is going to be done by railways is going to be at a record high uh, my sense is that you know focus on companies which are into speciality or you know which are into niche business areas like wagons or typically electric kitchen systems or even uh, train collision systems so i think in this respect you know you could look at rbnl from a longer term perspective but i think there are many good companies like titagar wagons hpl power systems and i think uh, the market is offering uh, you know investors a good opportunity to buy these good quality stocks at low levels so i think if you have a time horizon of say 12 to 15 months uh, you could definitely think of accumulating these stocks because uh, the earnings quality and the earnings push is going to be quite significant over the next say couple of months question is for you uh, guru wants to enter into kpr mill as well as century textiles uh, is this a good time to enter in both of these counters uh firstly i think the textile space is concerned i would believe that uh, it is better to wait for the december quarter because textile uh, sector is going through a small crisis in fact uh, you know the export market has uh, been a little rough considering the turmoil in the us and the european markets So I would believe that you know you could probably get a better entry in uh, both these companies if you were to look at the uh, uh, quarter three number, which is scheduled to be out you know by mid January. Uh, overall, the uh, you know industry has been going through a lot of rough kind of time, and I think margin pressure has been evident since the second quarter. So I think if you want to buy it, there could be lower levels which possibly you could accumulate you know after the third quarter, and obviously listening to the management commentary. As of now, if you have the stock, you can hold on, but fresh buying is not advised. Uh, I think. Uh, So hold on to both these companies, considering the fact that uh, you know fertilizer is going to be a big focus area for the government. Uh, my sense is that you know we could see a significant increase in the agriculture outlay and a lot of fiscal benefits given out to fertilizer companies. And most importantly, uh, you know National Fertilizers has been now uh, making decent uh, operating margins. They have started turning around, and I think obviously in the urea pack it has a large capacity, a good uh, pan India presence. So I would believe that you know if the investor has a time horizon of at least say 12 to 15 odd months, he should hold on. I think he should not panic. Uh, the markets have also been pretty volatile, so you know both these counters have been beaten down. But I think if one were to look at the next 12 to 15 months, I think a decent risk reward could come. Uh, I think uh, see PSU companies definitely look interesting, and I think uh, my sense is from the logistics space. Uh, you know uh, container corporation of india looks pretty solid i think it's a, a play on the railway infra theme and i think hopefully uh, once that strategic divestment is over you could see a very significant amount of re-rating here as far as power grid is also concerned this is a, a very solid kind of uh, you know power distribution entity uh, with a regulated return but i think it has been doing a commendable job so i think if one were to take the next uh, you know 12 to 18 months power grid and container corporation would be very strong bets from the psu pack so one can use the dip to accumulate these stocks yeah i think uh, we ignore the corporate governance issue the basic fundamentals of the company remain very solid uh, jm fordler is a very solid uh, kind of company operating uh, into you know glass liners uh, boilers which are supplied to the pharmaceutical sector and i think they have a very large order book a very good earnings kind of stream going forward so my sense is that you know if the investor has a 12 to 18 month time frame then one can use the current weakness to buy into the stock but please remember that in the very near term the stock will remain volatile and i think the market should obviously uh, take a look at the earnings quality and the growth in the next couple of quarters so definitely worthwhile looking at it but take a long term view and ignore the short term volatility actually i think you should hold on because in the cash management uh, market i think cms is the number one market leader and i think they have positioned their business very well 
fact, uh, the management has clearly said that over the next two years, they are looking at, uh, you know, looking at a top line of 2500 crores from the current level of 1500 crores. And profitability has also been very solid. It's a debt-free business with a very high ROC, ROE kind of, uh, you know, uh, margin structure. And most importantly, uh, you know, looking at the kind of uh, uh, geography of operations they have catered to, I would not be surprised that, you know, if one will look at the next 12, 18 months, this business is definitely going to flourish quite well. In fact, uh, my sense is that despite more competition coming in the market, you know, via radiant, uh, you know, cash management system, which is uh, where the public issue opens today, I would not be surprised that margin structure would continue to be positive. They operate at almost 25% EBITDA margins. So continue to hold on if you are not in a hurry. Uh, another 15, 20 or 20, 25% upside looks possible, but you need to give some more time. Reduce the beta from your portfolio. So I think uh, if you're sitting in, uh, in profits into these kind of names, it always makes a lot of sense to book out profits. Okay, this one is coming in from Sagar and he wants a fundamental view on uh, Nika Avinash. I believe you tracked this counter. So he wants to know uh, what sort of target should he look at? I'm unsure if uh, the, the target that you all have placed is around 200 or 300 rupees per share on Nika. So he wants to know uh, what's the rationale uh, behind uh, the target? Also, the fact that uh, does Nika look attractive for a long term bet if someone is already invested in this counter? Uh, I think Cheryl, uh, you know, this stock has uh, disappointed a lot of investors, and I think uh, after the company announced a very massive bonus of five shares for one share's head, I think now uh, it would be a little difficult for the company to actually get back on the earnings growth stream in the very near term. Uh, the post bonus equity would be about 147 crores from 47 crores earlier. So my sense is that you know investors need to take at least a two to three year view. The business definitely is very strong, uh, has promising prospects. But I think in the absence of any earnings growth, at least in the near term, I don't think you're going to see a very strong re-rating in the very near term. So unless you've got a two to three year kind of time frame, uh, in the near term, I don't expect any major triggers. Here. Uh, I think uh, Mirza International uh, did a good, uh, you know, kind of departure of their red tape division, and I think that benefited the shareholders significantly. So my sense is that you know, if the investor has a long-term kind of time frame, then only he should hold on. Uh, the footwear market is definitely quite promising, and I think uh, you know, branded players like Mirza, Pata, or for that reason, Metro have been doing pretty well. Uh, there, could, there was a hiccup in the second quarter numbers, but if you look at the long-term business uh, model of all these companies, there's a lot of potential and a lot of headroom to grow. So I would believe that you know, even despite the fact that the stock is down by 40% for him, if he has a 12 to 18 month time frame, I think he should hold on. Rather than booking a loss, he could 